G'day you bladey cads, the vaping fucking bogan, back once again for another dinky die review. How the fuck are you lot? Hope you're all doing good as bloody gold. Got ourselves another dual 18650 fucking squonker cunts. Yes, very nice. This one is designed by Dean the Vaping Biker, fellow reviewer over in the United Kingdom. If you haven't fucking uh, checked him out already, go and see his vids. I'll put a link in the description. Fucking decent bloke, honest, straight up. Uh, fair dinkum, and uh, he's teamed up with Dovpo, um, and they've come up with the Bassium. Here it is, dickheads. So it's uh, dual 18, six fucking 50s, regulated up to 180 fucking watts, also has variable voltage. In fact, it is a variable voltage and variable wattage device only, which I think is kind of neat. Very fucking tidy little design. Got the Bonza 1.5 sitting atop there, dickheads, and the drip tip is from Half Fucking Moon Mods, if you're wondering. Anyway, 120 fucking watts is what I've got it at. Uh, I got my usual fucking 0.1 ohm aliens in there. Let's have a two. Very nice, very nice. Dean has done some really fucking good things with this one. Put in variable voltage, which is something I enjoy, and a uh, an awesome squonk removal uh, bottle that uh, you can fit basically, you know, all sorts of other bottles in here. So you're not limited by a proprietary bottle, which is fucking nice. We'll go through all of that in a bit, dickheads. Quickly, we're gonna mention vape advocacy. Yes, again, again, dickheads. Please go and do your part, okay? There are corporations, governments, and big fucking tobacco wankers trying to ruin this industry in all sorts of places around the world, particularly in the United States with the FDA at the moment, flavor bans, all sorts of shit. Go down to the information in the description and uh, join those calls to action and write your representatives and tell them if they don't fucking support vape all right, you're not going to be voting for them because that'll make them think twice. All right, cunts, let's have a bloody bevo as always. Got myself something interesting today, something a little bit controversial recently. <laughs> it's uh, Punk in Drublet. Don't call me white. Don't call me white. It's a, uh, a hoppy lager that is a collaboration between Stone Brewery, one of my favourite US brewers, and uh, No Effects. One of my favorite fucking punk bands. Um, so yeah, it was produced for the Punk and Drublick Music Festival that's uh, meant to be sort of touring around the States around about now. Um, but yeah, no effects kind of fucked up. Uh, you know, they're, they're known for their banter and their controversial sort of jokes and uh, you know, whatever at punk shows. It's punk rock, that's what they fucking do. They, they say shit and sometimes it might be offensive. Um, this time they kind of went a little bit too fucking far. Yeah, I won't go into the fucking long story, but yeah, they made a joke about the whole Vegas shooting while they were playing a gig in Vegas. Go and look it up if you wanna know. Yeah, not real fucking good. And Stone have dropped the fucking line completely, so you won't be able to get these beers anymore. But uh, anyway, dickheads, you might be able to still uh, track some down while they've still got them in stock in the US. I managed to pick up a, a carton here in Australia, and they're pretty fucking decent. Hoppy lager, let's fucking get into it. It's 5.8%. Uh, On the back it reads, uh, this beer was a brew, uh, this this beer was brewed as a collaboration between Stone Brewing and Fat Mike, who just showed up and mostly just got in the way. Yeah, that sounds about fucking right. Anyway. Don't call me white. Well, there you go, dickheads. Got that lagery complexion, very clear. Uh, a little bit of head there. It's got a little bit of a hoppy sort of smell to it. As I said, it's a hoppy lager. I'm not normally a fan of lagers. They're too wishy-washy. They don't have enough fucking flavor, but this one has definitely got some added fucking hops there and flavor. So, fucking cheers, cunts. Yeah, fuck yeah. This would be a great warm weather beer because it's got that nice, clean, refreshing, lagery sort of taste you get from a lager. But then it's got actual flavor, which you normally don't fucking get with a lager. You got some hops there, you got some bite to it. It's got a really nice bitterness to it. it. Reminds me of just a classic bitter beer. You know, clean and crisp, light and refreshing, easy drinking, and uh, but actually having a bit of flavor there, a bit of hops, which is, uh, which is nice. It is what the fucking can says, a hoppy lager. Decent. Very decent dickheads. We'll pair it up with the juice, as always. Uh, in the Squawk bottle at the moment, I have some Pucker Juice, the black currant flavor. I featured this a few times already. Picked it up when I was over in Birmingham at the Expo. It's my last, last little bit. There's about fucking 10 mils, five mils left in there. Uh, it's a delicious fucking black currant flavor with a hint of fucking lime. Quick little mention as well uh, on these little uh, Squonk 
accessories that Watofo have produced. Basically, you just screw it onto any of your sort of chubby gorilla style juice bottles, and then you've got a fucking squonk connection there, so you can refill your squonk mods without having to fill up, you know, these these squonk bottles with the silicon. You got a decanter and refill and all the rest of it. I like this. Fucking 60 mils, just screw the cap on, bobs your fucking uncle, away you bloody go. So, uh, yeah, well, Tofo did that. A few other companies have done them as well, but thought I'd fucking mention it, cunts. It's definitely worth picking up a handy little accessory if you're into your squonk mods. Anyway, I fucking digress. Let's see how this black currant goes with a bit of a hoppy lager. That's going quite nicely, actually. The um, the black currant candiness going quite nicely with the um, the hop flavours there, and the lime. That's a, that's a nice little touch too. Mmm, that's actually not a bad pairing. Nice, light, fruity, refreshing juice with a bit of a fucking refreshing hoppy beer. Anyway, wankers, let's fucking get down the upper bloody close, have a good squeeze at this cunt and uh, give you some pros and cons. We'll do a bit of a side by side comparison with the Rage because obviously I think these are probably the two best squonk mods, dual 18650 squonkers on the market, the Rage and this one. What are the pros and cons, the differences between the two? Because they do have quite a different look, feel, shape and features to them. So we'll do a bit of a comparison on that one. You can kind of weigh up which is going to be more your, uh, your forte. Let's have a squeeze anyway, dickheads. Uh, you get a manual, which has got some key points, which I will mention. You got a 0.08 minimum resistance, which is fucking awesome. So you better fire your lower builds. Does up to 180 fucking watts and will output up to 8 volts, which is decent. You know, some of the mods out there only do 7, 7.5. So 8 volts, fucking lovely stuff. Um, silicon squonk bottle is 6 mils in capacity and uh, we'll run through all the rest of it. You'll also get a spare bottle in a different colour. So it'll come pre-installed with a black silicon silicon bottle um, and then you get a white or sort of transparent um, milky coloured uh, bottle as well which is really fucking neat. So here's the bloody mod. Very nice. This is the uh, the stainless version. I'm not sure whether it's actually stainless or whether it's uh, you know like a, a different sort of aluminium metal but I don't know. Um, but either way, it does certainly look like stainless steel. Uh, you've got about five different colours so there's also the black one here which we'll have a bit of a squeeze at. Uh, it comes in red, green, um, and blue, I think. Red, green, blue, black, and silver. I think that sounds right. Anyway, there's five fucking colors. But yeah, there's the black. What I do like about this one is it doesn't show fingerprints. It's one of these sort of paint finishes that um, really, even the silver, you know, doesn't, doesn't really show your fingerprints at all. Um, maybe if you really kind of rub some moisture onto it, but as you can see there, it's really not a, a fingerprinty kind of mod, which is really fucking nice to see. Right, so let's go through the uh, bits and bobs. Up the top here, we've got a nice stainless steel 510 plate. Uh, we've got a squonk connection, which is spring-loaded. Uh, you can fit a reasonably large atomizer up to about a 26. Uh, I don't have any 26 millimeter addies, I don't think, but a 25 will look like that, which looks very nice. You still got a little bit of lip there, so you could definitely go a sort of 26 millimeter addy if you wanted, but uh, really 25 is sort of the more common sort of maximum size that this uh, mod will handle does look very fucking nice with the Kennedy on there as well. I have to say, that's a fucking good looking little pair. But uh, yeah, I, I, I can s hear people saying that, you know, missed opportunity to put the, the 510 Central, um, which would have allowed a larger atomizer on here. But that definitely would have meant an increase in height. And it is a very, very short mod. I will point that out. It's only 80 millimeters tall, which is uh, quite stocky for its, uh, for its class. Rightio, we've got a fire button over here. Um, I feel like this mod is kind of geared more to a left-hander just because of the position of the fire button. That feels really comfortable right there with this curve just sort of nestling into your palm. When I use it in my right hand, it's still comfortable. Um, it's probably more comfortable to squonk with in the right hand. So fire it here and then reach over here and squonk. But in the right hand, it's definitely very nice and easy to squonk with. Fire with this button. Just wish this edge here was slightly more rounded. That would have made it a a bit more of a, a comfortable right hand mod. But either way, it's definitely very comfortable in either hand. Just feel like it's maybe situated just slightly better for a lefty. Anyway, dickheads, fire button, really nice and solid. 
no real uh, rattle or anything there. Uh, nice screen, we'll have a look at the menu system in a minute, vertical screen. Got your positive, got your negative button there. You got your squonk bottle over here, really nice cut out and very flush with the bottle. I really like just how flush um, the edges here and, and they've kind of basically used the bottle as the edge of the mod, the corner. I think that's really quite clever the way that sort of wraps around right in the corner there, it makes it very easy for squonking. Down the bottom we've got our squonk bottle, so we can basically just remove it by grabbing this little tab here or this tab here, and you just slide it out really easy, um, just the perfect amount of tension, not too hard but not loose. You slide the little fucker out, that's the inside there, and that's just making a connection with this little terminal here. And one thing I will say is it's extremely mess free. I haven't had any juice anywhere it shouldn't be. If I slide out the bottle on the one I've been using, as you can see it's fucking bone dry in there cunts. There is, uh, it's just like fucking nun's vagina. There's no fucking liquid anywhere. Um, very fucking nice that it hasn't leaked anywhere. I haven't got juice out of place. Um, every time I've, uh, I've slotted it in here, it's, uh, it's gone in and come back out without any juice. Brilliant. What is uh, fantastic also about this bottle design is you can use your own squonk bottles. You're not limited to a proprietary bottle. They've basically got this little tray here which uh, your bottle sits in, um, and you can go and swap out, you know, different bottles. You know, if you wanted to put in a, a plastic bottle, if you prefer that, you could always do that. You've got these SMJY bottles. That's going to fit in there just perfectly if you like those SM, uh, SJMY bottles, should I say, SJMY. Um, so there's, there's going to be many, many bottles that will fit in here. Obviously, you do need to have the sort of appropriate diameter, you won't be able to go wider than what we've got here, um, and obviously a height restriction, but there are, yeah, I can think of at least half a dozen bottles that will fit in here, which is, uh, which is fucking great. Silicon, nice and squishy. I love the fact you've got a black one and a white one, that, one every, that way everybody's happy. Um, simple system, you just unscrew and fill it up like that. And you can leave this still attached to your tray thing here. Um, or obviously you can just use your squonk refill bottles like I've been doing. But I really like what they've done there with that squonk bottle. And as I mentioned earlier, it does hold six mils of juice. Down to the battery fucking door. So simple sort of hinge system. You're just pulling that back, flipping it up. Um, it is a very nice solid hinge though. There's no flexing all over the place. There's no, you know, flexing, twisting it. And there's not really much movement either way. Um, that way. So I really like this battery door. It also has a really quite decent sort of... Uh, hinge or clip, so I haven't had this popping out on me um, at all, I haven't had the door fly open in my pocket or set the mod down and it pop open, beautiful tensions there, like the fucking tolerances, looks like you've got a little bit of a vent hole over here, um, and you know, it takes your single 18 6 fucking 50s, you've got uh, B and A marked here, positive and negative, so you're just going to grab your batteries, I've got a couple of uh, pickle ricks here, they're Sony VTC 5As and they've got an ODB old dirty bastard wrap on them, they're just going to fucking slot in like so, and um, yeah, once they're in there, no rattle at all. Very, very solid. Really like that. Very fucking decent. Right, before we jump into the menu system, we'll do a quick comparison up against the Rage. Um, because size-wise, they are, you know, obviously um, kind of... Uh, Similar in total mass, but quite different in their um, in their shape. As you can see here, you've got this sort of uh, very curvy, um, you know, new style, and then you've got the more classic box mod over here. Now, the own boy is actually quite a bit wider, as you can see, if I line up the edges here, you've got an extra probably centimetre um, or thereabouts in, um, in sort of total width from one side to the other. Um, in total depth, you've got about the same. So from here to here and here to here, it's about the same. You've obviously got a little cutout in here, but I feel like they're pretty similar in total mass. The, the own boy is a lot wider um, and the same thickness, but it does have the sort of cutoffs in here, whereas this is um, not as wide, but um, doesn't have the curves cut out of it. So you probably got about the same um, total, you know, kind of uh, amount of mod there, just different shapes depending on what you fucking like. Weight-wise, the Rage is definitely still heavier than the Bassium. Um, I think, you know, the, the sort of outer casing here is quite thick. Um, so the total sort of weight definitely feels like it's 
Not a huge difference, but definitely more on the uh, on the rage side of things. Right, so let's have a look at the chip. One, two, three, four, five. On she comes. It powers up super fucking quickly. I really like just how fast um, it just powers up. You don't have any delay at all. Pretty simple, um, but uh, sort of, I don't know, somewhat old school kind of uh, screen fucking layout. We've got the mode that we're in, which is in variable wattage at the moment. We've got our batteries indicated here, A and B. And we've got our wattage, does go up to 180 fucking watts. Above 100 watts, it goes in one watt increments. Below 100 watts, it is in 0.1 watt increments, which does annoy me a little bit. Come on, Dean, you know better than to do 0 0.1, um, 0 0.1 watts. You've got the amperage being displayed underneath that. You've got the applied voltage right here which is going to obviously change depending on the resistance and the um, the wattage you've dialed in and you've got your resistance or your ohms down at the fucking bottom there very very nice screen very bold bright good brightness to it I haven't had to adjust my fucking lights for the camera nice and fucking easy to see now to change your modes, you've only got two modes in this one. You've got variable wattage and you've got variable voltage. So to switch over to variable voltage, we're going to hit the fire button and the negative button. And we're over to variable voltage. You can obviously dial in your volts there in 0.1 volts all the way up to 8 volts, which is fucking very, very nice. And if we hold the negative and the positive button together for a few seconds, we can lock the device. So you can still fire it, but you can no longer adjust the wattage up and down. And there's no need for a lock fire button mode because you just turn it off, five clicks, off she goes, and then one, two, three, four, five, it's back on again. There's no delay, so there's no need for a lock the fire button because it starts up so quickly. So when you don't want to fire it, you just turn it off. Very fucking simple. So dickheads, I think that's about all for the Bassium. Let's jump back up top. Let's go through some fucking pros, cons, and prices. So there you bloody go, dickheads, a bit of a squiz at the Bassium. And as you can see, there are so many fucking things to like about this setup. Uh, I, I, there's, yeah, so many little pros that this thing has that uh, other mods don't have or the way that fucking Dean has, has designed it. I think it's just fucking tops. I think he's done a really fucking good job. But let's get into the bloody pros and cons. There's plenty of things I like. There's only a few things that I dislike, but we're going to go through. I'm going to fucking mention them. Uh, so let's uh, let's start with the fucking pros. Uh, I love the, the 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 chip. This chip is fucking really really nice and simple. I like that how Dean hasn't gone for fucking gimmicks and temp control, and he hasn't filled it with all the sort of bells and whistles that anybody might need. You know, he's gone with something that is a workhorse. It's an everyday mod. It's simple and it's effective. You know, the variable voltage and variable wattage option. No temp control in there. Some people obviously like the temp control. Gonna have a fucking cry about that, but not everything has to be temp control. And uh, you know it. Can keeps things simpler. I think the battery life has been really, really good on this. Maybe because it doesn't have all the fucking other crap going on with the chip that others do. I don't know, I'm just speculating, but I feel like the battery life has been very, very fucking decent. Maybe the chip has something to do with that. But I also love just how well the chip performs. Extremely quick to fire up, very, very fast. There's no fucking delay. You hit that fire button and you've got fucking vapor. The, the chip fires up really quickly as well. When you turn the mod back on, there's no delay at all. It's probably the fastest that I've seen a chip fire up. You know, the, the, there's literally no delay. You give it five clicks and boom, she's fucking on and ready to go. So that is really fucking neat. I love the fact that there's no USB port in here so that people can't fuck up their mods and their batteries via charging them, you know, using a USB. Some people are obviously not gonna like that, that maybe want a quick little emergency charge here and there, but I'm dead against charging your mods via USB. So I think it's great that it's not on here. It doesn't have temp control, so it doesn't really need firmware upgrades to tweak anything. You know, it's just voltage and wattage. So don't need the firmware and you're not allowing people to charge via USB. I think that's a fucking really decent little pro. Also firing down below 0.1. Now it's a little thing, but a lot of the time you get your 0.11 ohm alien coils. The ones that I use all the time, triple 26 gauge wrapped in 36 gauge Nicro. Often when I go to pulse those coils, they're actually reading below 0 0.1, 0 0.09, 0 0.08 sometimes. And then once you've put some power through them, they settle at the resistance that they uh, they, they do, which is 0.1. But if your mod doesn't fire below 0 0.1, you, go, you, you can't fire them. So it's neat that it fires down below that 0 0.01 resistance. It's a, it's a little thing, but it's a big fucking pro for me. 
I love the squonk bottle delivery system here. Um, being able to slide it out. So not unlike a lot of other sort of removable bottles that we've seen things like the Furion and the Rage and the Feedlink, um, where you can slide the bottle out easily, but you're not limited by a proprietary bottle, which all of those other systems do. Um, this allows you to put in probably, I can think of half a dozen different squonk bottles that will fit in this sled. Obviously you've got the width and the height restrictions, but there are a lot of bottles um, that, that will fit in here. So giving people the fucking option there is fucking really, really handy, but still giving them an easy removable um, sort of slide tray mechanism. Brilliant. Comes out easily as well, not getting stuck, but not too loose. No juice getting anywhere it shouldn't be. You know, nice and fucking dry in there. Love that. And the fact that you get two different colored bottles as well. You know, a sort of transparent one and a, and a black one. Nice little option there. You know, you see so many bottles, spare bottles, the same color as the one that, that it comes with. So nice that they've given that little touch there. And particularly on the sort of black one, murdered out, looks great. And obviously with the other colors sort of matching the top and bottom plates. The battery door, nice and fucking solid. Little pro there, but it's worth mentioning that the battery door has given me no issues. Uh like what they've done there. Um, the buttons, again, very good quality, and overall the build quality is fucking top notch. You know, the paint job hasn't scratched or or, um, or come off, but it's also not fingerprinty as well, so it's got a really nice feel to it. No fingerprints and uh, no chipping or scratching or any of that kind of crap. The buttons feel solid and, and clicky. No button rattle, which I'm, I'm a fan of as well. Um, yeah, fucking really, really nicely uh, done in terms of the build quality. Um, what else? I fucking, what have I been enjoying about this thing? Well, I turned it off. There we go. I like the position of the squonk bottle as well. On the corner of the mod, it gives you a really nice open hole there to um, to squonk on, nice and, and easy, not um, not out of the way. Uh, and I like the shape of it. I like the feel. You know, it's a, it's a square, it's a box mod kind of uh, shape, it's more of a classic, but I like it. Not only is it stable, you know, as well as, as comfortable, um, but uh, yeah, I think it looks good. You know, it's definitely a bit of a fridge. You know, some people aren't gonna like that, not to everybody's taste, but uh, I'm a fan. So let's talk about some of the cons. Um, um, nothing here that's a deal breaker, nothing that, that I think you know drastically needs to be changed, but a few things worth mentioning that might be uh, not to, to um, everyone's fucking taste. Um, the fact that it's a, it's a square you know box, it's not as ergonomic looking as some of the others out there, but it's still comfortable, it's much lighter than, um, than some of the others as well. Um, but yeah, some people aren't gonna like that square kind of shape to it. I've also noticed that it feels like it's a bit more tailored towards a lefty, as I mentioned before. Um, I would have liked to have seen it kind of flip so that the button was on this side and the curve was on this side here. Then I would have, yeah, I don't know, or maybe another curved side to it. Um, it just feels like it's sort of more comfortable in the left hand for me. No temp control, that's gonna be a con for some people. Um, not for me, couldn't give a shit, but for the 10% of those that fucking do actually use temp control, that's gonna be a bit of a con. Uh, no, it's USB port there as well. That's gonna be a little con for some people, but again, I think both of those for me are pros, but yeah, either way, um, I've gotta mention it there for some people. Not everyone vapes like I do. Uh, the other little thing that I mentioned, is not really a con for me, but some people are gonna say, you know, oh, why didn't they center the 510? You could have put a 30 millimeter Addy on here. Yeah, I tend to agree a little bit with that, but I also know that they would have had to extend the height to do that and had to put an elbow in the, um, in the squonk delivery tube. Um, so see the design limitations there, but something worth mentioning that, that people will see uh, the uh, the opportunity miss there for a, a centered 510, but I prefer a shorter mod, 80, center, 80 millimeters tall, nice and short, so I'm more inclined to go for the way it's designed here than, than to center it and make it fucking taller. Anyway, dickheads, I think that's all my fucking pros and cons. Let's talk price. What is this gonna fucking set you back? Well, these uh, came directly from Dovpo, so fucking cheers for passing them on. No, it doesn't change my opinion, dickheads. I give it to you straight. The extra one of these is going to a Patreon this month, so fucking congratulations to our future winner. Um, they're not really for sale as yet. I've done a bit of Google fucking searching and couldn't really find anywhere that had a price listed. They're listed on uh, a UK website, but no 
no price. They're listed on uh, a Lego mall, I think, in China, but again, no price. Um, and on Dean's website, he's got a list of stockists that will be getting them in the United Kingdom and in the United States. So I know that um, Evolution Vaping and Ohms Distro will be getting it in the UK as well as Vape Distribution. Uh, oh no, Evolution Vaping and Vape Industries. There you go. That's the two retail outlets in the UK. US, you're looking at uh, 8 Vape and My Freedom Smokes. They're going to have it. Um, and Australia is to be confirmed, but I do think, or I, I did uh, did hear from Vaporize that they will be distributing and stocking this one, um, so they'll be getting them very soon. Price-wise, dickheads, I don't know exactly what it's going to be, but I'm expecting it probably to be somewhere around about that kind of 50, 60 US dollars, um, probably the sort of 50 pounds in the United Kingdom, and probably somewhere around about a sort of $80 mod here in Australia. So it's going to be very well priced. You know, Dovpo don't usually have ridiculously priced shit, um, and I know Dean wants to make this a, a workhorse and everyday vape for people, so I'm sure it's going to be probably, uh, as I said, around that sort of 50 US price, which I think is pretty decent. But I'm just speculating dickheads, I don't know for fucking sure, um, you know, you need to wait a week or two. Uh, it says on uh, Dean's website that the release date is the 6th of July. So uh, a few days from uh, when you see this video, you'll probably see him popping up in retail outlets. So uh, use your fucking Google Foo skills and, uh, and hunt one down. But I think, um, you know, it's a damn good fucking mod for what I expect to be a pretty reasonable price. So, dickheads, how does it fucking compare to things like the Rage, which I think is probably its closest competitor? You know, the stuff from Geek Vape and the stuff from Kanga is pretty shit compared to this one and the Rage. So I think really it's going to be this or the Rage for a lot of people. And I think they're quite different and quite uniquely situated in the market. The the looks of them, the sort of ergonomic shape to the Rage is quite different to the boxy finish here. The fact that this does 180 watts and the Rage only does like 155 I think it was. Probably not going to be a big point of contention for a lot of people but for those that maybe want a bit more than 150 watts, you know, you can go this option with the, uh, the Bassium. Uh, the fact that it does variable voltage and variable wattage and no temp control, whereas the Rage does those options, it is a bit lighter than the Rage. Uh, I'd have to say that the overall weight is just a, a little bit less. Um, you know, the Squonk bottle delivery system is definitely, I think, uh, a different and, in my opinion, a preferred system to the Rage. Um, the fact that I don't going to use my own bottles. Um, but the Rage has got a slightly bigger bottle in it as well. So, yeah, look, it, it, it's two different sorts of mods. I think you kind of got to weigh up what you like the look and the, the shape to be. I think you got to work out whether you like variable voltage or whether you, you know, you just want the watts or if you want temp control. Um, you know, those sorts of things. They're all, you know, different in their own way and I think, uh, you know, it's, a, it's good that we've got options in the market, not just the same shit, you know, to compare. Uh, yeah, so you can't make up your own fucking mind which one you like, but uh, I definitely would recommend both this and the Rage as sort of the two best dual 18650 fucking squonkers currently on the market. So well done, boys. Well, I think that about fucking wraps it up, dear kids. I'll put my usual links to uh, my Facebook and Instagram down in the description if you want to check out what I'm doing outside of the YouTubes. If you want to support the channel, please fucking do hit the like, hit the subscribe button. But I do run an independent channel, which means I don't accept funding, sponsorships. There's no affiliate links here. There's no paid reviews. I want to keep it unbiased and ridgy ditch for you fuckers. But to keep doing that, bit of public support is always loved. So I've got a Patreon page where I do prizes, giveaways, and content that you won't fucking see here on YouTube. And all of that keeps me doing my fucking thing. But if you can't, that's all good. Just sit back, sub home your fucking dicks off or your tits off. But above all, stay off the bloody stinkies. I don't care what it is you're fucking vaping on, whether it's a squonk mod, a regulated mod, a mech mod. As long as you're not fucking banging the bungers, that is all we fucking care about. Cheers for tuning in, and cheery fucking oh. Well done, Dean. Have it fucking large. <laughs>
dove pose. Logan back once again for another dinky die review and I think my moustache is sticking out. Another Squonker Dickheads, another dual 18650 Fuck.